Well, it's time to say goodbye to the Volvo XC90 R design. As much as I absolutely love the Volvo XC90, Yamaha V8 all-wheel drive, it's time to say goodbye. So we are the third owners, and it began its life in Michigan, which is the reason for quite a bit of work that I had to put into it, or at least I felt I had to put into it. And I'll go over all that in the video. So this was not really an impulse buy. As I recall, we sold, no, we traded in. We traded in our Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo, also with the V8 engine, for this vehicle. And so we went from 250,000 miles to, I think this one had 58. I don't think it was on the low side of 50. Try and remember what's on the title. I think it was 58,000 miles. So, you know, we, we bought some time. And now it has exactly 119,000 miles on it. And we were going to buy a new Volvo XC90. That's right, a new zero miles Volvo from the dealer. But, you know, the Kung Flu started going around in the 2020s or so. And that kind of put off our buying decision. Then there was like a car shortage, supply shortage, blah, 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 blah. Cars weren't available, didn't feel like fighting people over. You know, Volvo's a very small niche in the market. So, you know, it was like, hey, it's running great. The new cars get the same gas mileage as this one. You know, the two liter engine, if you put it in a 5,000 pound vehicle, is only going to get, you know, 24, 25 on the high end. And 19 on the low end, which is exactly what this V8 does. I mean, I don't even try. If I need to hit the gas, I hit the gas. And, you know, I, I really don't fiddly fart around and uh, try and nurse every MPG out of this thing. Also, being retired, you know, it's not like it's a daily driver. We put eight to 10,000 miles a year on this car. And, pff, you know, so it's a grocery getter. You know, it has a trailer hitch, a Volvo factory trailer hitch. It's wired into the system. It has its own module associated with it. Uh, so, you know, if I need to hook up the trailer, go to the hardware store and get a sheet of plywood or whatever, hey, there it is. You know, and oh, that dual exhaust. Oh, I love that dual exhaust. <laughs> it sounds so good. Here, let me fire it up real quick for you. So one of the first things I did was wheels and brakes. So I do not have the original wheels on this vehicle. These are aftermarket vehicles and that Volvo logo came from Romania off of eBay. <laughs> because aftermarket center caps are smaller than OEM. So I had to kind of get the eBay ones. And actually, those are the second set. Yeah, the first set was silver. Uh, if you know about Volvo's wheel caps, uh, they have both silver and blacked out. And I had to get the blacked out on the second go around. The silver ones just kind of, you know, just faded over time. You know, cheap plastic garbage. Uh, these lasted quite a while. They're coated. They're pretty nice. Uh, 55 millimeters uh, on the outside and maybe 
50 millimeters on the inside something like that I you know I've, I've forgotten but anyway so I got the aftermarket wheels and aftermarket Volvo logos I put on the mud flaps that was an option uh, on the newer cars you only get front only so I don't know what I'm gonna do I took it off the um, options list uh, I didn't I it was two hundred dollars on the new car but I didn't want to pay a hundred dollars for each mud flap I can put those on myself but there's none for the rear so I decided to put that off uh, until I get the vehicle and figure it out I mean it's gonna be garage kept and babied and low mileage and all that so we'll deal with that later all right, another repair I did was the latch, the rear latch. So I'm turning in those plates, so that number is no longer going to be valid. But if you look up here, the lights and latch are all one piece. It's a whole unit. This latch, the bar that goes in there to allow the latch to move, uh, was all rusted and it hadn't become stuck yet but I saw that it needed to be replaced and I did that you can watch all my videos on this XC90 everything I did and I'll tell you what I didn't do and paid to have done also um, for one reason or another alright while I have it open um this car does not come with a spare. It came with like a f official Volvo fix-it flat thing. But if you know anything about fix-a-flat goop that you pump into your tire when you pick up a nail or something, is that it only works on some punctures. I mean, if you get a sidewall puncture, it's too bad, so sad. You're not repairing that. You're staying stuck uh, with a flat tire on the side of the road. So when we purchase the vehicle, we asked for and received this uh, spare tire. <laughs> you know, it's a space saver, but what the heck. Actually used it one time. The wife hit something on the way home and I went out and rescued her. So it was a good thing we had it. So I'm showing you the cargo area here. This is a seven seat. Our, also our new vehicle is gonna be a seven seat. What that means is there is a seat right here between these two. If you look at the new T5, B5, T6, B6, XC90s that are coming out, even the electric vehicles, when they say six and seven seat, this seat is missing. So there'll be two more seats back here, which we've never used on this vehicle. So. All right, there is the battery right here. Uh, change of tire stuff. There's the jack. A lot of open space over there. Uh, a lot of open space over here. You actually have to remove this to get to the back lights if you have a light bulb go out or something. Um, it's also where I keep all my straps, my tie downs for the trailer. Uh, my trailer hitch, which I decided I'm going to give with the vehicle because our new hitch just needs a ball and I'm not going to take off the ball and give him the hitch. He might want a four inch drop so that his trailer's level or something like that. Who knows? So anyway, uh, these seats, they go forward and up if you want your seven seat capacity. All right, so there's plenty of room to put stuff, you know, like your tie down straps, trailer hitch, all kinds of room right here uh, next to the battery. All around the battery, there's your jack between the seats. So, um, and if you see dirt, you know, I haven't vacuumed it out yet. The vehicle is sold. We haven't signed the title or received the money yet, but everything is in the works to be sold. Uh, and <laughs> I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's gone. So, yeah, that's why I'm doing this video. So, there is no jumping the battery back here. That's done in the engine compartment. So, 
Okay, we have two passenger compartments, you know, drink holders, uh, air conditioning control, uh, latches, cargo net latches, uh, all kinds of good stuff in here. Uh, the seats are really, really weird to go forward. I guess I can show you that. But anyway, so if you had a six cylinder, you would have one of these. Uh, you would ratchet down the spare and drop it down. Uh, but however, because of the dual exhaust, you don't have room for a spare underneath there. So I was going to rig something up, but I never installed it. So I'm just going to give it to the new owner. They can have it. You know, this is a used part that I got from uh, the uh, local scrapyard, and it's a local Volvo scrapyard. <laughs> uh, second largest in the com country. Maybe they're the largest in the country now. I don't know. They flip back and forth between Erie uh, and uh, L&B Auto. So, anyway. All right. Let's close this up. All right, I know you can't really see it too well. I'm not zooming in on it or anything, uh, but the white trim floor mats are the Y design. There's also one between the second and third row over here. I was just going to demo the seat going down. First thing you got to do is have the headrest down. That's one tab. Then you can uh, move the seat forward for people to get in and out. Then there's a latch right here, and that moves it down sort of flat. <laughs> so, anyway, but quite a bit of room if you need it. All right, the center cost console has a rear drink holder, ashtray, a power outlet. Uh, there's no cigarette lighter in there. It's a power outlet and air conditioning controls. Uh, I mentioned the fan in the back for the uh, third row of passengers. There's fan control uh, for the second row of passengers. Also, you can see how good the leather has maintained itself. You'll see the front seats are also in really good shape, even though they are dirty. Uh, you'll see dirty, but you won't see... Um, crinkles wrinkles you know really deep stuff that you know you need the uh, car doctor to uh, come in and fix leather doctor or whatever the heck so anyway that's the back both simple and complex at the same time all right there's some of your rear passenger controls uh, if you need them I don't know all of them it, it's uh, definitely airflow uh, and I think stereo volume, if I'm not mistaken. So I've never used them, so I apologize for not telling you what they really are. <laughs> okay, the R Design has a unique instrument cluster only for the R Design. That is not an R Design steering wheel, that is a wooden steering wheel. The R Design steering wheel that came with it was in. It was just so nasty, dirty, crappy, horrible. I just, I just changed it out. I think I did a video on that. Uh, all of the controls and everything are pretty standard. The uh, navigation is controlled over here. It's kind of hidden behind the steering wheel, but when your hands are on the wheel, it's very convenient. And this guy pops up. He is both the navigation and the rear camera. All right, when I was back here, I really didn't show you the rear camera, but it's under the O in Volvo right there. And this is an official Volvo rear camera that I had installed. Uh, you also need the uh, Vita software to activate the module to the vehicle. Uh, so I needed some help with that. I think they charged me 45 bucks to download the software into the vehicle and get them talking. So that was another after factory official Volvo installation that I did. I did all the physical work and software the dealer did. Well, 
L and B Auto, but same thing. Um, so the uh, camera and the tow package are official Volvo, and they both needed software to work with the vehicle. All right, you see uh, satellite radio. I'm going to let the new owner have it until we get our new vehicle, and I transfer the account over to the new vehicle so he'll have free satellite and XM radio for a while. Um, the center CD player is uh, questionable. I'm not going to say it's broken, but I'm not going to say it's running uh, quite right. The uh, air conditioning heat controls are insanely functional. The air conditioning is wow cold and the heat is wow hot. <laughs> it's absolutely insane in both directions. All right, the button controls from left to right are rear AC, which I leave on on hot days because the car cools off quicker. Uh, the directional headlights, you can turn them off when you push the button, you turn them off. So if you turn left or turn right, the headlights go left and right. Uh, then we have window lock, then we have mirrors closed, and that is manually controlled. So in other words, you don't program the car, so when it's locked, the mirrors close, you push the button. And then the um, rear hitch required a uh, silencer. So that's uh, what that does is it turns off the uh, distance sensor, uh, meaning these guys back here. So if you're towing a trailer and you put the car in reverse, you don't want that alarm going off because it's going to uh, sense the trailer and think you're really close to something and it's going to alarm. Uh, that's the original shifter. I didn't change it. I wanted a wooden shifter, but that turned out to be more complicated than it needed to be. Uh, so, I mean, to get it out is real easy. You just pull the stupid thing out and that's the end of the story. Uh, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I couldn't really find one that I liked without going custom and I was too cheap to spend hundreds of dollars for a gear shift. Alright, let's hear our, 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 our for the Yamaha Marine V8 engine. So this is Yamaha's Marine V8 engine that Volvo adapted for their vehicles. Uh, my wife's S80 when we test drove, that was also a new vehicle purchase from the dealer. Um, she did not want the V8 and this the was it five cylinder six cylinder <laughs> I, I forget because I've had European five cylinder vehicles European spec vehicles spent some time in Europe and I become confused because now I'm old so confusion is part of life <laughs> anyway uh, she did not want the V8 so we didn't do that and the only engine compartment issues I had was some fitment issues because uh, this car has a rebuild title. Uh, that means it was wrecked and rebuilt. Uh, it was technically written off and bought at auction and then LMB Auto rebuilt it and we bought it. So that was why we paid hardly nothing for it. All right, we have the Xeon headlights, which are both good and bad. They're good when they work. They're bad when you need to replace the bulb. Psh, insane. Insane. So, and there's no swapping it out. It's not like I can take that unit out and put a halogen in there. <laughs> and I mean, the whole thing. I mean, there is no direct swap replacement, so... And there's a whole bunch of software issues you have to deal with. You need Vita. And DICE, which is the software Volvo uses on their vehicles. So, what repairs and stuff did I need? Well, I needed a new steering rack because I took it into the dealer for some reason or another. Might have even been state inspection now that I'm thinking about it. And they told me there was a leak in the power steering, so I went to LMB Auto 
and they replaced the entire power steering rack. I later found out that the power steering reservoir is not just a container for liquid to reside in. There's a filter in there, so if you have the vehicle for a period of time or, an, or a period of 100,000 miles or more or anything, you need to change the whole reservoir. There is no back flushing the filter. And if you think you can, well, good luck with that. All right, over here, the air cleaner is really complicated. It's kind of, I did a Toyota air cleaner. And they only rise up enough for you get, to get the air cleaner in and out. Or should I say out and in. And I don't like that because I like to clean out the compartment and everything. Get all the dust and dirt and sand and Lord only knows what else is in there. So it's, it's kind of a pain in the neck. Even if you take off the nozzle between the mass airflow sensor and the engine it still makes it kind of difficult to get into the air receiving department compartment and uh, where the filter sits on top of to clean that out so yeah it's kind of pain in the butt but anyway it's a 60,000 mile air filter so uh, and believe me when I did change it out I actually could have let it go longer. They are really, really nice air cleaners. Uh, I would never, ever put a junky $10 air cleaner in these vehicles. It's, it would be insane. All right, I have done quite a bit of work to this vehicle. Um, I highly recommend that if you um, have to replace CV axles. You use Volvo CV axles. I know it's a price shock. This CV axle on the left front here was $650. Uh, but the problem is with the boots. The boots are s smaller and shorter than, let's call them standard boots. So if you buy an aftermarket one, it's going to rub and wear out and throw grease everywhere and that and then all that money you saved you're gonna spend again and again and again and you know so you're gonna buy you're gonna spend that money anyway if you keep the car for a long period of time so uh, despite the cost of a CV axle if you split a boot sorry about that you're just gonna have to cough it up so, uh, control arms. This is a 5,000 pound vehicle. Technically, it's classified as a truck. Volvo classifies this vehicle as a truck. So, you are going to go through tires. Sorry about that. Tires are 30,000 miles. Anything else is you're running on the wear bars. And if you push them all the way to 40, you're running on slicks. Sorry about that. So, in this particular time frame of uh, vehicles, you know, your XCs come with all of your XCs, you know, 60, 90, whatever, V70, whatever, you know. They come with three different uh, calipers. And what you'll notice now in the newer vehicles from like 2016 on, which I believe is the P3s they're calling them, uh, they're going to have the same size for all the vehicles and you, they don't have to stock, you know, three different calipers, three different brake pads, three different rotors for the brakes. So on this particular vehicle, you want to, this is the only dual piston one of the three. Uh, so you, the anti-rattle clip is going to define what size it is. So if you look at this uh, anti-rattle clip, it's like a bar going straight across there. Um, that is the dual piston one. Uh, if your clips look like these wire ones here, it's going to be the uh, smaller one. 
and I forgot to look it up before I made the video. Yeah, you know, 315 millimeter, I think they call them. So anyway, and then there's another one that is much larger, even though it's a single piston. And um, so you got you got to watch out for that. And sometimes they sell the brake pads, they'll say like 17 inch wheels, which has nothing to do with the brakes. So, I mean, these are 18 inch wheels. The, 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 car, the car came with 21 inch wheels. So, yeah, you, know, <laughs> you know, so there you go. All right, I really haven't done anything to the engine. I changed the spark plugs. Nothing has leaked. No coolant leaks. Um, I changed the starter, but it didn't need to be the starter. It was another issue, so I threw parts at it, and I was wrong. Sorry about that. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> no problem. I can really suck down the windshield washer fluid, too. I mean, by the gallon. Uh, because every third or fourth activation, the headlight cleaner pops up. And I mean to tell you, this thing can really throw in... The windshield washer fluid uh, I had to repair the uh, not the hoses but the connections to the sprayers up here they were uh, failing I think one of them broke and I replaced them both I remember doing that again you can look at the videos that I did on this vehicle to see what I done with it and then I had uh, what did I have the shop do Okay, besides alignments and a few other things that are minor and I could have done myself, I remember the transaxle went out on us. So it was the front transaxle. It broke. We heard a noise and a grinding and we didn't know what it was, but the car ran fine. So we didn't, you know, it could have fell off the car and uh, we wouldn't even known any difference. So we took it to the shop and it turned out to be the transaxle and it was the shaft that went from the transmission to the transaxle. It had just ate all the teeth out of it. Um, again, I complained to him. I thought it was a low flood vehicle and that's why it was all rotting out. I had them replace the brake hoses on the front and rear because I did not like them. They were in horrible condition. Again, I thought it was a low flood vehicle, but they swear up and down that it was not. And it could have been just that it sat in the, you know, outside in the field for a few years, you know, because it was a wreck. And just, you know, Mother Nature ate away at it, you know, dry rotted a few things. So anyway, new brake hoses, the shop did that, and they changed out the uh, transaxle. That was unbelievably inexpensive, and it was only a couple hundred dollars because they rebuilt them themselves. I didn't have to buy a Volvo one. So thank you again, L&B Auto. I am so glad I live next to the largest Volvo salvage yard in the country, unless Erie is the largest and that's Erie New York not to be confused with Erie Pennsylvania I think Erie is the guy's name and and the the shop is near Albany New York or something like that uh, the Volvo salvage yard and again I changed the grill as I mentioned earlier I found the Volvo badge that was originally on here you know back in 2009 they were still using this badge on all of their vehicles and this became available it was a direct fit pop out the old one stick in the new one it was ridiculously easy the R design came off of the old one I just stuck it on the new one uh, the grill has two numbers uh, it has an R design number I think it just comes with the badge but I didn't need it then also I dealt with a company that oops got a text uh, distracted me um, so this faded and there's a company that makes these uh, stickers and you just uh, put the sticker on there and replace the R design. They also make, you know, all kinds of stuff for your car. They're, you know, if, <laughs> if you search the internet for 
uh, Volvo stickers or something. I don't know if you need to replace this. I've heard people complaining that this comes off. I haven't had an issue, so anyway, if you need stickers, there's a company out there. I did a video on it, so <laughs> uh, subscribe to my channel, like my videos, all that stuff that I don't actually say in my videos because <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. Farewell, Volvo XC90. I hope you do well for your new owner. You did well for me. V8 all-wheel drive, tow package, dual exhaust, beautiful sounding Yamaha V8 engine I mean just this whole exhaust system is utterly fantastic the Volvo you see there on the hitch cover I just painted that myself you may have noticed some detailing in the engine compartment I painted that myself also uh, I did a video on that <laughs> watch my videos again uh, <laughs> sorry about that so in my lifetime, I've had, uh, I, I started off with General Motors, uh, had a couple of Chryslers, uh, liked American cars because I could get parts from them. Then I slowly drifted into high-end BMWs because that's where I discovered you can buy like 7 Series, you know, you can get a luxury car for a dime. And, you know, if you can work on cars yourself, then you can keep it running. But if you have to take it to the dealer and get everything done, they're, they're just insanely, ridiculously unaffordable. Same thing with Mercedes. Mercedes is even worse. Uh, they can, uh, they have their parts locked down pretty hard. So getting genuine Mercedes parts... Uh, you're paying pretty much full retail everywhere at least with BMW you can get parts everywhere uh, Let's see Volvo. They're a niche market if you look what are they 20th? <laughs> in volume of sales or something, you know uh, But you know we drifted towards Volvo. Uh, I guess my wife learned to drive, you know one of those tanks you know one of those uh, early 70s Volvos and so, you know, we kind of are driving Volvos now. So we really enjoy them. They've been very dependable. Um, you know, nothing major left us stranded on the road, even though, you know, this one, the front transaxle went out. We could still drive it. You know, we, uh, now the wife did get a flat tire, but that's not a Volvo situation. That's an any car situation. And I haven't really done much to it. There are a few little piddly little nickel dime stuff that I really didn't go over. Uh, but as far as a car, you get in, drive, get groceries, go to the hardware store, pull a trailer, whatever, gas mileage, you know, it's all, it's all good. You know, I, I like this car. I have no problem selling it to the person I'm selling it to. Um... And let me let you in on a secret. I'm only asking $2,800. I asked $3,000 and I asked him if that was okay. And he said $28 and we said yeah. <laughs> we are not used car salesmen. And when you buy a used car, do you get four oil filters, an air filter, two cabin filters, front and rear brakes, power steering fluid, replacement halogen headlights, and replacement light bulbs, and uh, a windshield cover, uh, spare tire lift <laughs> that I talked about, uh, WeatherTech um, back shield too that goes in the back there, yeah, um, cargo mat, you know. Two sets of Volvo windshield wipers and extra rear windshield wipers. This is a Volvo front windshield wipers, but it's only the driver's side. And it looks heavy duty, so I think it's a winter one. You know, when I was actually driving to work. Um, you know, it's pretty thick, heavy duty. Kind of one of those ice ones. So... How about that? And then miscellaneous hardware, you know, break stuff. So how about that? I bet you don't get all that stuff when you buy a used car. Oh yeah, one thing that went wrong, the, uh, the door 
for the fuel uh, kind of broke on me so I bought two uh, replaced it and then this is the second one so I have a spare because I figured if the first one broke the second one will too so there was that like I said halogen I meant Xeon so there is a replacement bulb these I think they actually came down in price a little bit but anyway it's good to have a spare So that is what they are getting when they buy this Volvo for $2,800. And again, the reason I went so low, I saw the trade-in was uh, between, let me round up to $3,100 to $3,700 trade-in value. So I asked $3,000 and that's because the title is uh, a rebuild title. That's what they call it in Virginia. So it's it's not clean, you know. So this this car was a total wreck, zeroed out by the insurance company, rebuilt and recertified to the state of Virginia uh to the, you know, apparently what they told me is a state trooper comes out and does the inspection of the vehicle as opposed to a licensed technician at a gas station or something. And he'll uh, inspect the vehicle and declare it uh, rebuild and then you can reapply for a, a title. So we are selling it to the son of the man that put in our new kitchen cabinets, <laughs> which I'll do a video on that, which will probably be Christmas or later, uh, three or four months from now because, you know, we're waiting on custom doors and a few other things. It's just unbelievable our kitchen is going to take 13 months from start to finish and that's physical work our planning was actually two years prior to that so it's actually going to take over three years to rebuild our kitchen but that's in another video subscribe to my channel and you'll get a hit the bell and you'll get notified when I post that you know <laughs> hey I don't worry about stuff like that you don't have to subscribe if you don't want to. So that is my video on the Volvo XC90. Uh, we really enjoyed this vehicle. It has not left us stranded on the road. We, oh man, the power is just wonderful. To go down the road at 70 miles an hour when the speed limit is 70 miles an hour. And it is just a wonderful, wonderful ride. I highly recommend it. Uh, we thoroughly enjoyed the 60 or so thousand miles we drove this vehicle and thank you for watching. Have a great day.